Okay, so I'll hand over to Isabel and Aya. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much, uh, Sharon. And uh, lovely, lovely to, to meet you, everyone. Um, so yeah, so as, as Sharon has kindly mentioned, so our names are Isabel and Aya, and we're going to be talking about the Proper Good Investment Fund, which recently launched uh, to invest in Bolton, Oldham, Stockport and Wigan. So to get us uh, started, um, so the first, the next slide, sorry. Uh, so we're going to tell you a little bit, just an, as an introduction, like what social investment is. And in a nutshell, it is a loan. So this is repayable finance. And um, the purpose of this uh, finance is to give um, an organization that has a social or environmental or cultural um, benefit for a community, uh, give them the opportunity to develop sustainable uh, income, so in the form of trading income, in the form of um, trying to diversify the way that they access um, basically the, 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 the money that will allow them to become sustainable. So the social investment, the loan that we give has to be kind of a, a vehicle towards sustainability. It is not um, a, an end in itself, it's only a means towards something. So it is really important to mention that um, this type of finance is available for all sorts of organizations. We don't have like a set, uh, you know, legal uh, structure that we can invest and that's it. Like we take a very broad approach. It can be um, like what we consider traditional social enterprises such as community interest companies, but it can also be community businesses, uh, co-ops, can be charities that have trading activities as well. And basically also it, companies like private companies that have a social purpose embedded within their, their constitution when they incorporate it. We can also look at those. So in a nutshell here, the message is, this is pretty much a, a very wide um, pool of, of target organizations that we can invest in. Um, but it is really important to, to say that, uh, well, they have to be, in this case, working in the, the four boroughs, have to have some degree of, of um, footprint there. And um, yeah, so that's kind of in a nutshell, the, uh, the social investment, what it is and what it is for. Uh, can we go to the next one, please? Brilliant. So what uh, Proper Good, basically, it is a, a program that was uh, launched in 2022 to deliver 6 million uh, overall uh, of social investment into these four boroughs. Uh, we currently have two funds, which are the ones that we're going to tell you about today. However, there is also a, sec uh, like a second element to Proper Good, so it's not just investment. There is a development side to the program which is delivered by local partners in each of the bor boroughs. So in the case of uh, Oldham, it is Optern. So you probably have heard from An Anwar Ali, uh, who's uh, the lead um, partner that we have here uh, in Oldham, uh, who, who leads Optern. So the, the program Proper Good, um, it, is, it is kind of an, a national and nationwide uh, initiative and it's happening uh, in other areas of, of England as well. Here in Manchester, in Greater Manchester, it was decided that it was going to target these four boroughs, mainly because uh, we wanted to make uh, investment accessible for areas of Greater Manchester that traditionally maybe are not uh, you know, accessing those, those uh, funds. So in order to tackle uh, the barriers that, that people may be facing in the local boroughs, it was decided to have this dual approach of having a development side to it. So uh, development means uh, supporting organizations that want to start the trading journey. And so they need support developing their initial ideas. And on the other side, giving them the funds via the loans, the social investment, so that they could actually make those plans a reality. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of in a nutshell there. And uh, the next one, the next one, please, Sharon. So I'm going to tell you about the first fund, which is the early stage fund. Uh, now, as pretty much the, the, uh, the as it says in the tin, it is for organizations that are 
uh, in the early stages of their journey in terms of trading. So um, in a, in a, as a summary, this is an unsecured loan of up to 30K. By unsecured, we mean uh, there's no need for the organization to put any property or asset or anything as a security for the loan. So that's pr the, the whole point behind this is to try to make this again accessible. This fund is interest free, so there will be no, no additional interest. You only pay what you borrow and uh, you can pay it back uh, from, from anything between one to three years. And you get uh, a period at the start where you don't pay uh, anything. So that's for three months, the three months at the start of your loan. You don't pay anything because we want to give you time to put everything in place and then start yielding like the, 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 the trading, the activities, the increased income, hopefully that you're going to have so that you can start repaying your loan. Now, when we talk about early stage organizations, um, we are, we, again, like there is no set like threshold of income or anything. It's usually um, the case that we have early stage organizations being between uh, zero to three years old. That's kind of uh, an early stage organization, but I would say that it's important to note that you can also be a, a longer established organization. So maybe you've been around having activities for more than three years, but most of your activities have been grant funded, right? So that means that in order to survive, to exist, the organization has relied on applying for grants, getting that type of funding, maybe donations as well. So there hasn't been really a trading element to your activities that would still classify you as an early stage organization. Um, the thing here is that um, you basically what we're looking for in an early stage is that you are either wanting to do the transition into having sustainable trading income as, as your part of your uh, income strategies, or that maybe you have already had some degree of trading uh, and you're, you've you're wanting to grow that a little bit because it is in the very early stages. So, um, so yeah. So in a nutshell, it's quite a it's quite a a, a broad, um, let's say, profile that we're seeing in organizations. It also means that um, you you kind of will be in in a different side, different stages of your journey. It doesn't mean that you have to be super new. You can also be a, a, a longer uh, established organization. That would be absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, so that's in a nutshell uh, early stage. And we're moving on to the second fund that we have, which is called buildings. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the buildings fund. Um, this is the one I'm currently just focusing on. Um, so this one is a bit, uh, it's, to be honest, it's just for the organizations, which I think would be at the next stage, which is they are interested in either purchasing a property, building a property, renovating it, refurbishing it. Um, you can use it as a mortgage deposit. You can use it as a lease deposit. Basically, the whole idea of this fund is that you're able to invest in your building. So this gives, again, unsecured loans of up to 350000 This one does have a bit of grant mixed in. So whatever you request, you'll get 10% grant and the rest will be a loan. Um, you, it, this one does have a bit of interest, 6.5% interest, interest, which is quite in line with the sector. Um, and yeah, you have one to seven years to repay it. Um, similarly to the early stage, here you have six months where you're only going to be paying interest. And that's just basically for you to... I think with building works, you need like six months basically to get everything together and get everything running. Um, because a big part of us giving investment is we don't want people repaying us back from the loan. Um, but yeah, so this one with with this one, you you don't have to actually own the property. It can be leased, and we do say that it should be leased at least as long as um, the term of the loan. So if you're borrowing for seven years, we would expect you to have at least a seven year lease. Um, obviously, if you're investing about like 350,000 into a leased property, we would expect you to maybe have it for a bit longer than seven years. Just that, that's just because you as an organization is going to be investing so much into this. Um, but yeah, this could, I think 
this one is particularly um what we're currently really trying to highlight that you can use it for um, to make your building more energy efficient. So if that is installing a boiler, if that is installing better insulation, getting solar panels, whatever it may be, can also obviously be done through this fund because it all counts as like renovation. Um, and we also do highly encourage accessibility. So um, using this, this to bring in a lift because li lifts are actually insanely expensive. Um, and we have heard that there's not a lot of funding available for accessibility reasons. Um, so yeah, that's just a bit about this fund. Um, we'll maybe go to the next slide. Oh, yeah. So this is basically about eligibility and like the types of organizations we would expect to apply for to social um, investment. So um, it's just kind of like, if you ask yourself these questions, are you a social business? By social business, I think we're trying to expand the thought of what a social enterprise is. We don't want people to just think, okay, social enterprises, that means they're a charity or that means they're not really trading. That means all that stuff. A lot of social, Enterprises are social businesses, so they do already trade, they already, you run, as, it's not like, it is a business, right? It's not like a business, it is a business. So um, it is basically asking yourself that question, are you a business? It might be that your organization is more project focused, which is perfectly fine, but it might be that like investment really isn't for that type of organization. Um, we then asked you, our, like we said, our current funding, the proper good funding is available in Bolton, Oldham, Stockport or Wigan. Um, fingers crossed, we will have some GM-wide funding coming very soon. But for now, this is where this fund focuses. Um, like we were saying before, uh, it's a, we really want to focus on building or growing a sustainable trading model. And that just basically means we want to make sure that all the money we're investing in the sector is actually growing the sector. Six million is a lot of money to be investing into four boroughs in Manchester. Um, and just to put it into context, most national funders have about four million nationwide. So for us to have that much funding to put into boroughs, it's it's actually a very good opportunity that I think we have now. Um, and it is all about growing the social economy. It's not just about us making a couple of investments into organizations and leaving, but we really want to see the local economies grow and, you know, um, do you have a plan in place to do this? This is a really good question. So a lot about investment also is timing. So if you have a plan in place and you know how you're going to build, how you're going to grow, then you'll know when you need to access investment. So this is something that we always help people with as well. So it doesn't like, we always say, just reach out to us as soon as you start thinking about investment, whether you're going to use it now or not it's always good to just know the information and have that as an asset for your organization and you know that it's just a good thing to keep in mind basically when you're planning your strategy when you're planning you're making your plan for your model it's just a good thing yes yeah, just like additional little tool I guess um but yeah I think that's it for this slide can I can I jump in? Sorry, before we move. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, so just uh, to also mention that when you when you're thinking about the plan to do this, think of as I as we were saying earlier, social investment is a tool towards getting to that stage of sustainability and to to being able to not rely on specific streams mm -hmm. of income that tend to be restricted, such as grants. So you have to consider when planning towards this that social investment will allow you to have a great deal of flexibility so social investment uh, because of its nature because what it of what it intends to do will allow you to spend on money on whatever it is you need to get to that point of sustainability so whether that's staffing whether that's capital expenditure which means basically uh, you know investing into material stuff for your organization Whatever it is that you need, usually it's it's basically you choose, you tell us your plan and you you choose what you want to, to use the money for. And then it's pretty much, it doesn't have the, the same type of restrictions as to what, what grants usually have because they say like, no, you cannot use it for overheads. In this case, you can. Do you need a bookkeeper? Do you need to get some money to pay an accountant? You can use this to do that. 
I think it's really, really important that when you consider whether social investment is ready, it's, it's a good thing for you or not, you have to think of the ways that you would use it and what it will, will allow you to, um, to gain basically in the long term. And um, the other thing also to, to clarify here is that we are going to be looking at um, investments that focus on these four boroughs, but it doesn't mean that you have to be registered that, there. So you can be registered, uh, you know, your organization can have a, a, a registered address elsewhere, but maybe you are part of your footprint includes uh, one of these boroughs. So maybe if you're based in Thameside, but you have some activities in Oldham, you could potentially apply, but um, you have to do it for an activity or a building, a property, basically that's located in the borough, if that makes sense. So um, so yeah, just wanted to chip in with those, but we can, we can move on, yeah. Yep, so um, I'm gonna talk about how the application process actually works. So um, the first step is also always a bit, it doesn't always go this way because there's loads of ways for us to be introduced to people and have that initial talk. But in theory, the way it would go was someone, if someone came across us on our website, they would submit an inquiry form, which you can find the link for right there. Or even if we come across, like we do like a workshop like this or a presentation, that's where we would expect to get people in. So through the inquiry form, we are still obviously always open to people just dropping us an email or contacting us in another way um, for that initial contact. Um, and then we'll always book in an initial conversation. So that is where we firstly hear a bit more about your organization. And we also tell you about social investment, how it works. And we can sort of see if there, if it does, if it is something that is a possibility. Um, and then we sort of think about, we, we have a bit of a conversation about what your plans might be. Um, at this point, the conversation might be a bit more high level, um, unless you've got all your ducks in a row and you're already ready for investment, which is amazing, then we would have a more in detailed first conversation. Um, but there's nothing that you actually need to prepare for this conversation. It is just us trying to figure out a bit more about you. Um, and then we talk a bit about eligibility. So um, that includes things like, as I was mentioning earlier, like your legal structure. It includes things like, um, for example, with the early stage, like we, ha we have that you need to be trading for X amount of time or not be trading for too long, basically. Um, with buildings, um, it might be that you have a lease, but it's not to end at the end of the year, which means you might not be eligible for the funding. But yeah, so there's loads of different steps of eligibility that we go through, but it's nothing intense. And it's we try and get it done at the initial stage so that we're not sort of like wasting people's time and taking them through the application process and then being like, oh, sorry, you're actually not eligible for the funding. Um, so yeah, we do, we don't mind, like we, we don't mind having this initial conversation at any point in your timeline. So whether it's very early on when you're just starting to think about investment, it's fine. We can still have the conversation then and you can tell us what your plan is and we can revisit the conversation six, seven months down the line and see if everything is going to plan and what's happening. Um, but again, like I said, if you are already ready for investment, we'll have that initial conversation. We'll talk about your plans, eligibility, and then we'll send you an invitation to submit a full application. So at that stage, we'll also send you loads of supporting documentation. So that includes a guide, which breaks down everything we need to see in your business plan, everything we need to see in your cash flow forecast. Um, it breaks down some of like the more, we try very, very hard to not use jargon, but sometimes with something like a guide it's, it's very very difficult to not because there's some things that you just need to bring across but we do have like a little type of glossary thing at the end that explains some of the words um at this point obviously we would have already had that initial conversation so we will discuss things around accessibility so if you do need absolutely any support to work through your application um we have lots of tools available within our team. So whether that is us helping you fill out your application um, or whether we take you through a different additional support route that we have, um, there is a way and we really do try and focus a lot on the accessibility need. Um, it might be for a lot of people that English actually isn't even their first language. So submitting something like an investment application can be very daunting and um, 
you just don't want to do something like that if you don't fully understand um which is like obviously completely understandable um when we talk about the support we provide um it is very like very very hands-on so we will talk to you as many times as you want us to talk to you um we will have as many meetings as you feel so the way it goes is you'd submit an application and then we would review it and we'd come back with feedback we can do this as many times as needed we try it you usually get it down by like the second or th like the, by the second round of feedback this everything's in a pretty good state but we don't expect everything to be perfect we do not expect you to submit with a perfect business plan and a perfect cash flow the first time um amazing if you do and that's great but um like we basically try to say don't spend too much time trying to make things perfect because we're here to tell like I think it's always quicker you know if someone knows something to just ask them if that's the right thing to do and you just get past that stage a lot quicker I find so the people that we work through feedback with quite quickly I think are the ones that move through our pipeline quite quickly I think um but yeah so that's sort of how the process goes once they come to us for our application and we get the application ready we actually give it to panel and I think Isabel is going to talk a bit more about how that actually works yeah yeah cool thank you Aya uh yeah so then yeah exactly so how how are decisions made for proper good basically we have um an investment panel so it's a, an independent body that's making the decisions now there there are depending on the level of risk there the application may go to a different panel so there is a main GMCVO uh, program wide panel looking at higher risk applications and buildings applications. And then there is a low, there are local panels in each of the world that look at lower, like mid to low risk uh, applications. So once, as Aya was saying, like, so we have this very supported process of, uh, you know, uh, working with you on your documents, giving you feedback and really trying to support you to produce the best possible investment application that we can. And um, then after we, we are happy with the way that your application is looking and your supporting uh, documents are looking, then we put that to panel. Um, so the main GMCVO panel happens every six weeks. So that's also something to keep in mind, uh, particularly if you're thinking of a building's application. Um, and um, so once the panel meets, the decision usually comes out of uh, in well, out of four different options. So they could either say yes, and then you can start your paperwork uh, in pretty much immediately. And once that is completed, you can draw down, like get the, the money, the investment uh, into your bank account within 10 working days. So it's a pretty quick uh, turnaround. And we believe that this is, this is particularly important for you if you, if you need to like time, like when you, when you need the money. And um, if, for instance, if you're looking at a property, we know that time is, is of essence when it comes to real estate. We are very much aware of that. So that's the first option. The second option could be that the panel says uh, yes, but in principle. So the, what that means is that the panel would be happy to support um, as long as there are certain conditions or further information um, that can be provided. So that happens usually when the panel spots something that they, they want to have a deeper look at or they want to confirm before they can agree to uh, give out the investment. So that can be anything can be uh, so, for instance, an example would be they would like to see the signed version of a lease, right? A long-term lease before the investment can actually be, be uh, made. So uh, the third option, the third uh, way that the decision could go is that they, they say no, but they, give you, they usually give you an invitation to return at a, at a later date. And the, the very, very good thing about this is that the panel provides very, very useful feedback. So uh, I think we always get uh, very, very nice surprises when we go to panel because the, the panel is made of people that have a wide range of expertise, like areas of expertise. So often, uh, although we work with you and we review stuff constantly, there are things that we miss and the panel is just really good at picking up and it's really, really good feedback. I would say um, it is, it is just a, a very interesting opportunity to have like high level 
you know, finance people review your documents and give you feedback on it. Um, so yeah, so that would be the third option. Then the fourth, which we would say doesn't really happen that often, is that they say no, like a blunt, like a blunt um, no. <laughs> um, but this is really unusual, to be honest. Like uh, the thing here is to consider is that unfortunately it is the panel that makes the decision. It's, it's nothing that uh, falls into our team's hands. Um, but yeah, that's kind of in a nutshell how the decisions are made. Um, then we finally, like the last bit here, we wanted to tell you is just uh, help us if you can to spread the word. As Aya was mentioning, uh, six million for four boroughs is a lot of money, <laughs> and uh, and we're we're really really keen to just be able to reach those organizations that um, that may have. Maybe they're curious, maybe they, they don't know whether this is something that would be good and they are unsure of applying. We would say if you know someone who's in that situation, please just, just um, let them know that we're here and we're very chatty people and we're happy to just have a conversation, even if there's no, no strings attached, no nothing. Like uh, We can just have a chat to discuss um, questions that they have to help people see and assess whether this is an option or not. Social investment is not for everyone. That's one thing that we are very aware of. And we have a duty of care with organizations um, as to we, we will not lend money to an organization that we believe won't be able to pay it back. So, uh, so keep that in mind. And if, if you do, if you find anyone, anyone in the VC uh, sector that wants to look at social investment, uh, there is also a referral fee scheme available. So if you are a VCSE organization and you refer uh, a fellow organization to the fund and they end up drawing down uh, investment from the early stage fund, then you get a reward of 1% of the value of that investment. So that's a way of kind of incentivizing um, people to, to spread the word. And it's also important to say that we don't have a specific referral process. It can be as simple as an introduction email. Uh, you can give them our contact details and, uh, and, and just tell them, please mention that we, we referred you. And that would be it. It can be someone that you bring along to a workshop as well, uh, a session, that's fine, that would count. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, the nutshell there. So the next one is, we wanted to show you a quick video. Uh, yeah, for case I'm going to share a video because I think it's always nicer hearing from other people how it actually works. Someone's actually been through the process. So I am going to share my screen. Please let me know if you can't hear, but it should work. Um, oh. Highway Hope is a social enterprise. Being a social enterprise just means we trade. We trade with donated items and some other, you know, um, services to be able to raise funds to address social issues. It's making a difference because our charitable services help to tackle food inequalities. So we try to ensure that people are able to get food from us in whether through a healthy meal or through a food parcel or just having some tea and coffee in the cafe. Obviously we run like a second hand furniture trying to tackle furniture poverty for those who maybe are not able to afford very expensive furniture. When we moved in to start a church in Manchester, so my husband is the church pastor and uh, he's had a passion to outreach to the community. We just didn't want to come on a Sunday, you know, have church and then go and then we're not there the whole of the week and then everyone's wondering what is happening in that building. It's all about really wanting to reach out to the community as a church and finding out that you know people are definitely looking for someone who will listen to their stories so we were there for our community and we realized there was quite high rate of unemployment and we wanted to do whatever we could do 
and so if we have to do that we definitely will have to have some form of income generating activity so that's what one thing led to the other so to so say and uh, we are where we are now we have a number of um, trading activities i'd mentioned that we started off with the charity shop there's still a charity shop at a church and the charity shop is opened uh, on a daily basis which are donations from uh, just the lo local residents but we also do education so education in terms of tuition classes supplementary school that has the like the 150 children we have summer school summer school is very popular we are very known for our summer school in our shop in stockport we run the food shop we run uh, furniture we run clothing and then in open shop we have photography and beauty So sometime, um, I think it was um, 2020, 2020, I think. So there was this access to growth that came in through the email to say we, maybe we may be eligible to apply. We were running um, a little mini uh, discount food shop here, but we realized that um, there's quite a growing community here and we, we needed to increase our lines you know with maybe some African food and we're thinking we will need to increase that with maybe additional 50 lines and there will be maybe some culturally appropriate um, food stuff we didn't have the funding to start it so when when that came we just snapped so we quickly you know uh, took it up we did the application and i mean everyone at gmcvo is doing a great job but honestly alana has been by our side you know we can't say our story without mentioning that name because guided us through all the application we we, we applied it's been really good because she comes she take she comes to do supplies and it's benefited a lot 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 of people it's a growing community here but this is the first african shop in stockport it's going on very well we are happy you know that we were able to access that fund the support uh, that we as a charity has had it's been enormous we've not just been left at the deep end at all they've navigated us through every step of it you know it's been like support all all the way yeah so they've not left us just to you know like <laughs> sort it all out ourselves they've been there supporting us yeah other organizations like ourselves should consider social investment because it's a way of sustainability for their organizations we are able to trade and to raise funds from our trading activity and to carry on with the charitable objects that we have i would recommend that organi other organizations should look into that <laughs> because it, help, it does help sustainability and longevity of the organization very quickly one of our investees um it is always nice I think to hear from someone else about how it actually helped people we love watching these case studies and seeing um like the benefits of all the programs you're running um I think we only had a couple more bits to share with you which was um I think one of them was that we have a couple of upcoming webinars so that is, we have um, an introduction to social enterprise finance, which is basically going to cover a lot about what we talk about when we say financial, we need some financial information from organizations to apply for investment. So we'll talk you through what we mean by a cash flow, how that actually works, um, and just like things that we as funders want to see 
from a financial sort of perspective when people come to us. Um, we do have another one for diversifying income streams, which is really good for organizations trying to figure out how they can trade um, and the different sorts of avenues they can take. Um, and obviously a social impact one, which is always helpful for people to see how to put social impact into words and um, a lot of things around social impact. Um, you can, we'll send these slides around, I think, so you can sign up through there. Um, but yeah. You can always just ask as well um yeah any so like i said before we do fingers crossed have some new gm wide funding coming very very soon so hopefully in the next month but we do have some funding already available in oldham um like we said so the proper good program there is a development side which our partners are upturned we can make introductions to upturn and we usually do because that's how the sort of cycle of the investment goes um so please do get in touch even if you do, do just want us to drop an intro we're happy to do that um we do have some in-person sessions coming up in oldham which is always nice um so there's one about growing your social enterprise which is next week and one about access to funds and becoming investment ready the following week um there is going to be someone from the investment team at each of these as well um and yeah, it's always nice to have an in-person event, I think, every now and then. Um, but yeah, is there anything I missed as well? On further no, damage? no, that was it. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get to see some of you at these events uh, that are being organized by Opturn. And um, it would be lovely, as I was saying, to just see people in person in real yeah. life. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Cool. So yeah, yeah, we can move on to the Q&A. So any questions?